Hey gamers, welcome back to Banished Souls. We are playing Skull and Bones. This is your Captain Cryptic Gaming. So, just out collecting your eights. We had a long night of farming last night. I think we farmed that man goat in about four hours to open up some of our new cosmetic pieces and stuff. So, it was a lot of fun. I'm hoping to see some cosmetics for the actual side of the ships. Would be cool. So we'll just have to keep farming that man Godin out, man. If you're having problems getting it to spawn, you need to make sure you've got a contract. But you can go up there by Kamoy Estates and just wait right there in the dock. And somebody will load up a contract at some point. And that's what we were doing last night. Just kept fighting it. Back-to-back -back battles. And then we would alternate, throw in a little pest every now and then. And uh, it was a lot of fun. So this is kind of my basic ride to start at the top, work my way down, and then I'm going to come over this way. I like to kind of zigzag across the open seas. I know it takes longer that way, but I usually pick up more resources as far as those helm ships and even the plague ships that pop up. But I've been asked about the route a lot, so I figured I would just stream the route that I collect so you can see what we're doing. And it works for me. Everyone has their own preference, obviously, when it comes to gaming. Just like everybody has their own battle styles, their strengths and weaknesses help to dictate what your ship is going to do. But we saw Zamaharabu. He, he sailed off last night, or swam off last night, I guess. Uh, my guess is we'll see it come back. They'll be rotating between that and the man Godin's, I'm sure. But uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that works out. Personally, I would like to have seen where they, instead of removing them from the servers completely, they end up becoming a non-contract item that can still be farmed in open seas when they pop up. Kind of like the man Godin does over in the East Indies. But that may be something we could see them do later in the future. So I do use the sandbuck when I collect. Like I say, this is one of the ships I use the most just for the DPS output that it does, man. You don't want to be messing around with them plague ships for any length of time if you don't have to. Just, just blow them up, sink them, and keep going. In the past, I've always shot these little ships. I think I'm going to forego that today. They just don't pay out a whole lot in conjunction with stuff. So this way I get that eight run kind of over pretty quickly. You could use the Brigantine. We have that uh, Doomsday build we worked out. That thing has been sweet to use. Uh, it's mostly the reason I built it was for PvP, but it obviously it does great in PvE. If you can take on other players, you can take on any of these NPCs. Come on, puppy. I got a dog licking at my toes, and he gets a little toothy sometimes, like you. I like to mark where I'm at because sometimes, or where I'm headed, because sometimes you get caught in a battle and you just kind of get turned around. This way you have a marker to help you fight toward your next location. Typically if a rogue ship comes in or one of those plague ships, I make them chase me, man. Uh, if you turn into them anymore, it's like they're getting smarter or they've been changing some of the... Uh, AI stuff uh, properties in it where now if you turn into them they take off running and they're in a brigantine and they want to sit there and just pop you from a long distance so it's easier to just keep going like you're going hit them in the mortar a few times and go from there So you 
Somebody cue up some Bob Seger against the wind, man. Yeah, but if you uh, if you end up finding yourself in a situation where you come into a server and the man godens are spawning, definitely join in and help uh, get a few shots in it at the very least. The reason I say that is you want to come in and collect as much of those resources as you can. You can get the uh, cosmetic pieces. You get uh, it's a total of nine or ten gold boxes from that battle because each man goden you destroy is going to give you a gold chest, so that's going to increase your odds. But there's so much resource up there. I think we ended up pulling about six or seven hundred of the repair kit threes. I prefer the twos, but man, I'll take a repair kit every day because eventually we're going to get those large hull ships and those things are going to be great. Now, you could focus on just advanced repair kits if you prefer. That's up to you. Uh, it was just the repair kit threes that it was dropping last night or early this morning, I guess. It wasn't really last night anymore. But we were up from, I think our servers released at 10.30 Central Time, somewhere around in there, maybe 10 o'clock. And we were up to almost, or I was up to almost 5 a.m. with those guys hammering that thing out. <coughs> so lots of, lots of goods that you get out of there. You get a ton of commodities. And what we were running into is running out of ship space, so we were having to dump stuff in. And as soon as we completed the Mangone mission, we loaded up on our snows and went back and finish collecting the area that way we'll be able to pick up all those commodities and things and when i mean that there's a lot of commodities i don't mean 20 or 30 we're talking up into hundreds uh, i was dumped out in one battle about 173 of the repair kit three so that's a really good option if you're needing to just farm up on some of those resources man i highly recommend that you you run that with some friends and just hammer everything you can and uh, pick up what cargo you can the battle bark that we showed y'all, uh, I believe we named it the Kalichi or something like that, based off of an old warship or an old ghost ship legend over in Chile. So that was one of those really cool things to do, and we had plenty of space to haul all that in. But even then, we were getting over encumbered. We had a guy using the snow he had set up for battle, and uh, same situation. He was running out of room in a snow. I mean, can you imagine running out of room in the snow in, in a single battle. I mean, that was just impressive, the payouts we were getting. Not a lot in the way of cannonballs or munitions, unfortunately. And that is that is why we use... We'll pick that up on the way back. But that's why we use the sandbuck. I like to get those explosions and those fire blasts to damage the other ship. Say he were to explode there, he did. So, after we make that first tributary, I do swing up here. Like I say, it can be a little out of the way, but for me, it's all about the farm on the way. You want to get as much resources as you can with everything you're doing. I know there's a lot of guys that don't like to face off against a lot of these ships, and and uh. Definitely look at our ship builds on YouTube. We've got a special playlist just for that. And then we have our tips and hints in the main, the main part of it. But you should be able to piece something together following those guidelines. It's going to make it so it's just another ship. It's no different than shooting a raft a couple rounds and you're done. So I did run a helm mission last night before I got off. And... Uh, I'm assuming that's why I've got helm ships spawning in instead of plagues. I don't see an active death mark on me. It should be down by the rank of the ship. There should be a little red eye if you're death marked. I'm not seeing that, so I'm not exactly sure what's happening here, but it all works out. So for 30 minutes, I'll use that food that gives me brace mitigations and, and uh, stamina depletion, uh, reduces the stamina depletion, increases the stamina production so those are some good foods to have and they last for 30 minutes so you don't want to use a whole lot of it i did have some of that on my ship the other day when i was fighting pvp it makes the world of difference when you're using the builds i guess we should stop to pick that up it's already sunk oh well it's all good so then my next step is i'm gonna come in here to lumber yard and i'm gonna swing through grab all this head up and i'm gonna shoot down and then when we come back over we hit that that southern edge of the aisle there. 
If you're wondering where Lepest is, he's he's spawning in three different locations. So he spawns here near Rangot Cave. He can spawn up here above Kamoi, and I've actually seen him spawn down in here too. So it's going to be just a random hit. It's, it looks like three different locations instead of two like when he first started, and then we had just one location last week. So you're going to have to look for him. Uh, I don't see where he's any harder, honestly. We, we popped in. Farmed them out within four or five minutes. It didn't take long. And uh, we just swapped between that and the Mangoden spawns last night, man. And it was just a blast. That's one of the things I love about playing with our Discord group is uh, always, always something fun to do as a group. And let me tell you, you get enough pirates in there. Everyone wants to test those ships out. You get enough guys in there with an aggressive play style. You can farm a server out quick. If these ships blow up, they blow up. If they don't, I'm not too worried about it. It's one of those things where I just kind of want to get out of the way. And you can get them out of the way one way or the other. By sinking them, running them over, or just going around them. We could have waited for the warehouse to fill up. For me, it's just easy to just collect it first thing in the morning. I'll have a few to fund tonight when I hop off, and I'm good to go. I mean, there's not really any major, major complications with it. Of course, we're going to take some damage from that gas ball. Always, always. There's always one up through here. Okay, we're going to take this southern fork head down and grab that other location when we come out we'll grab the two on the western coast and then shoot over to Africa grab our tin over there that's down near the bottom I don't bother funding or collecting the other ones but once in a great while uh, now you can do that to raise you up the leaderboard I've currently got oh let's see over 412,000, almost 413,000 pieces of eight. So I don't really see wasting my silver, wasting the, the time to go out of the way to collect the smaller ones on the back side. But typically, if I'm going to go look for materials to build cannonballs with, I will fund those up, let them fill up. And then when I come in the next morning, make my, my way through those tributaries before the shipwrecks and the NISD, which is little banana fruits. <coughs> come on, puppy, don't start going crazy on me there. Yeah, if you game and you have a dog, you probably know how it gets. They'll go to sleep. Just go, hey, get me some gaming in, and that's when they wake up. They're really like a baby in a lot of ways. This one here. Yeah, we probably should let those fill up more, but I want to get in with the guys group up and be able to do some battles without having to worry to break off and collect eights later so but with the slower production rate of the eights I don't think it would have been a problem but why risk it just go ahead and grab them while you're doing something kind of gets you in the mood for you know whatever type of battle situation these tributaries I've kind of decided that they're a great way to learn how to move maneuver in tight quarters around guys where you need to run your sails how to make those sharper turns or you can get out and slam against each other. But if you play with a dedicated group, you kind of learn each other's play style. So you kind of know where someone's going to be at based off the formation that y'all typically run in, their battle styles. One of the things that can mess you up a little bit is uh, last night when we were fighting Mangoden, we had a couple of randoms in. And they had long-range cannons, but for some reason they continued to get right into close-range proximity area. And everybody plays a little different, but it can be it can be annoying when you got seven or eight guys in there and you got someone keeps getting in the way. But hey, you just adjust or get your your bigger ships, your snows to help push them back to the range that they need to be in. 
But that's something being considered of other players, guys. If you're using a long to medium range weapon, then be long to medium range. Sandbucks typically are going to use demi cannons or the uh, flamethrowers, which means they have to be a lot closer in the battle when you come flying up in there. And your healer barks when you have a long range weapon set on there. You're just getting in their way of, of being able to drop the enemy quicker. So be mindful of what battle strategy is in, in the servers that you're at. When you see a battle taking place, people are always happy to let you join in to, with the farm. But just be considerate of if you've got a close-in ship, then get close in. Don't be smashed into your healers on the outside. If you're using a healer class or long-range weapon, don't be right up on top of the ship getting in the way. One of the things we were trying to do last night was board demand goadens. It does increase your rate of getting a good drop for cosmetics. And every time we would line up to to get those cosmetics, one of the t one of the two goobs would end up coming over there, or noobs, whatever you want to call them. They would come in and, and block it, you know, by shooting the ship. As you as you've got it hooked on the rope, they would shoot it to blow it up so that you couldn't actually board it. And when you get stuff like that, you know, you can look at it as griefing or just look at it as they don't know what the heck they're doing, which is probably what it is. I mean, it doesn't take much to build a level ship now because they've raided all the weapons through the roof. <coughs> they've increased rating on some of the ships and stuff as well. So it's not really showing that they're a good player just because they're flying around in a level 12 ship or sailing around. But I guess we don't technically fly unless you're in that uh, Bark 2.0 that they had out. Some, some of the computer guys had somehow... Figured out how to put some kind of a coating in it where the ship would actually fly, which was weird. Those players don't get to play long because they typically get reported and I haven't seen it in a while. So, But I will give Ubisoft props on that when you come across a situation, whether it's PvP or whatever, and you start seeing there's obvious stuff that'll be, you know, they're obviously running some kind of script or some kind of coding or something you know you look see what what console or if it's pc which it's been every single time that i've seen it uh when you're in battle and you've got nine guys wailing away on a sandbuck or any ship for that matter and everyone is just wailing away on it hitting it with everything they got and, it, and the health doesn't move then you know they're running something at that point someone needs to go in and just hit a report what that does is it cues the system to check it out and if, they're, if it's determined by the system that it's cheating, it removes them. Not just from the server, it removes them completely from being able to play this game for the rest of their lives. Now, I'm sure there's ways around that, but I don't know why anyone would risk $70 to do that. But hey, things are what they are. But that is going to be the life and death of a game, any kind of game with PvP, is do they... Do they actively remove people that are running these scripts? And so far, Ubisoft's been doing a great job of it. We missed them. And that's why I like to use the scrapper station on here because it does charge your health up. When it comes to the sandbuck, man, you need all the help you can get because it does have the weakest in class uh, when it comes to holes. And I'll always toss the rope out haphazardly, see if we can nail anything. He had to get that last shot off, but it's all good. Didn't help him much. Here we go. Let's go collect. I heard them holler out. I, I think it's just a local. Yeah. Yeah, if you remember, for those of you who played some of those early beta tests a couple years ago, uh, the stamina meter used to be what was called a mutiny meter. And if we passed that ship up and didn't even try to board it or attack it, 
the Q, the crew would mutiny on you. Uh, and then they had some where if you're just blowing up ships, it would queue up that your your team wants to board the next ship. If you didn't board that next ship, your crew would mutiny on you. And it made it really hard to do anything in the game, man, because you can't always board those ships in a thick situation. You just sink them and, and, and move on, you know. Uh, but, yeah, it, it was one of those things I was glad to see it move to a stamina meter. I know the stamina meter has made some people mad, but it, it just is kind of what it is. I mean, it makes sense when you have a, a full cell and then a full trim on top of that. You can run it half cell, run it at full cell or full cell with full trim. Pretty good options, I think, on the game. You don't really need anything more than that. I'm sure they could come up with something. Like I say, it's, it's a long trip out of the way. But typically, you would be farming all of these ships as you come along. Like I said, we got so much resource last night. Not too worried about it. I'm just looking to get my eights done so I can join up in team. We've got quite a few guys online. If that's something you're looking for is a Discord group uh, of some great players, not a bunch of griefers and stuff, you know, and, and you know the tryhards that, that come in and try to make you feel less than because they're a little ahead. We all work together and try to bring everybody up to the fi same fighting strength, which will be whatever the top is currently. Uh, we have a leadership team over there. They do a great job of that. I like to get involved with it, too, just to, so I can see what type of fighters we're getting in here. And we've got a lot of aggressive play styles. Then we have some of those sniper play styles that like to kind of sit a little further out on the edge and just do massive damage with those uh, long-distance weapons that they have. And if you can hit with them proficiently, man, that you need those on your team, man, for sure. Okay, so then, of course, we turn back around and we head over to the Red Isle. So those are my tens in Africa. The other areas I've not bothered bringing up. I need to look at them, but like I said, I typically pull in enough in a day where I'm not too concerned with it. In fact, next season, I'm not even convinced... I'll get Africa, maybe for, for three of those locations, but St. Anne seems to be doing just fine on its own. <laughs> okay, I hear my crew barking out. I'm not seeing any aggressives at the moment. That don't mean there's not one at the end of the bay. Locals. And that's why we use the sand buck. sure we mark the location we have okay so sometimes you get kind of side saddled into a battle and lose your direction that's why it's always nice to just double check make sure you've marked your next next pickup man it definitely helps and i don't need him messing around when i'm dealing with this helm ship so we won't take him out pretty quick maybe
Oh, against the wind. So yes, our YouTube name has changed to Banish Souls Official, in case you weren't aware of that. So now when you go in and you type in to find us, it'll be Banish Souls Official. Uh, easy way to find us, man. Um, that'll be for all of our, our in-depth videos. You'll be able to find a lot of those here. Uh, I kind of use Twitch as a test ground for videos, see how things are going. But typically I'll record into it because I don't feel like dealing with capture cards and stuff like that. So it's always a great aspect. Get a good long video and then bring out your highlight points of the information that you feel is relevant to the players, you know. Uh, I, there's enough worthless information out there, obviously. Uh, we try to show some of our big farms and stuff to show you how effective you can be with a team in this. And, and we typically have a, an open uh, invite policy right now. Obviously, you know, once you get in there, you have to read the rules and stuff, which is pretty basic you don't you know don't come in and be insulting to everybody based off of politics social status stuff like that we're just gamers we're here to play we're here to have fun in the game so we keep all that real world garbage out which has been nice um and if you don't then you do get warnings and if you don't heed the warnings and obviously people get removed at times but it's not really been a problem we've not really had that issue uh so that's been kind of nice we have a pretty good leadership team in there that monitors to chat while they play and uh Give little reminders, you know, say, hey, you know, getting kind of on the borderline there. But we're also not a bunch of nannies. I mean, it's adult talk just like over here is general BS. You know, as long as we're all having fun and we're not intentionally trying to pick on a specific person. Now, I understand we do joke around and joke around a lot. We, I mean, like a whole lot. But that's typically just, you know, your, your typical banter, you know, guy banter, stuff like that. We do have a lot of women that have joined into the group now. I think we've got up to maybe five of them. And uh, a lot of them are wives, but there are some that are, you know, not. And uh, they come in and, and seem to have a lot of fun with everybody. And let me tell you, you don't have to worry too much about saying something offensive to them at all because they're usually the one leading the way when it comes to those types of jokes. It's always, it's always cool to see people basically like how i grew up man uh we are a, a generation of gen x and they're of course the the older millennial generation as well that came in after gen x so everyone's in their 30s 40s we do have a few guys in our in their 20s and stuff but but a uh, very mature group i think our oldest player said he was 62 if i'm not mistaken which was cool man i wasn't the oldest we had quite a few guys in their 50s, so again, I wasn't the oldest, so that's always kind of nice. When you're a kid, you like to be the oldest of the group. When you get older, you want to be not really the oldest, but definitely not the youngest. You just kind of want to be somewhere in between. Maintaining that illusion of youth, man. But this has been a great game. Now, if you like them real fast-paced action shooters and stuff, like Call of Duty, Battlefields, and stuff like that, you know, that you you would probably find some of the progress of the game slow unless you get into those big farm battles that we do but uh it's, it's one of those things where you know it's a different style of game but it's throws back more to the old school rpgs where you have those grinds i don't find the grind hard i don't even find them that long once you figure out exactly the area you need to grind the type of ship and stuff like that in the most effective way it, it goes pretty quick i think i mean i think the longest i've had to spend trying to find something was you know maybe a couple tries trying to get the gannet saltpeter that seems to be the biggest one that's hardest to drop here lately uh, that's found over in the helm you go over to your uh, attacks and stuff and you can find the fleets that carry that usually about every second fleet that i'll destroy i'll get one uh, there are some guys that are out there that say they're able to don't blow up the cargo ship just you just shoot the bigger ones and they keep spawning in and they've been able to get stuff that way I've not verified that to check it, but that's what they say. I mean, at this point, if there's something I need, I usually just grab it out of the black market for 1500 We pull that from one location with just a few hours of build up here, so. Okay, we swing back in. There's a better way, obviously, coming in through the other section. But to me, I just 
come this way. I don't I don't care much for that lower tributary much, so I stay out of it. Now we've got one more to collect on this corner, and then we have to go in on the east side of St. Anne. And I'll show you how I collect that. And again, man, it's just whatever route you wish to take. Me personally, I like this one pretty nice. I started to go ahead and blast that guy, but we'll leave him. But yeah, so these cells look pretty good with the Ouroboros armor. I'm just hoping to get some of that that decking stuff that we can change out. I've not seen anything drop. I've not heard of anything drop. There is a real black hole that you can get for your ship. And it's got a real nice, uh, very nice high gloss color to it, man. It looks really cool. That was one of the new ones that comes off the Mangoden ship as well. I've not seen anything that causes the, you know, the red smoke effect and stuff. I wouldn't be surprised to see them start bringing stuff like that into the game. <coughs> so we're going to come over here. We're going to collect. We hit these. Then we'll swing up and come back around. Collect in just south of St. Anne and swing north. Typically, if I'm looking to do any kind of major farming type stuff, I will throw in a couple of contracts to deliver skull rum or whatever, any of the skull products. And uh, then I'll go collect my eights, run and bust a helm real quick. But, you know, like I say, that's not always the case. Sometimes you like to just come in when you're just coming into the game for your day. You're selling in. By the time you're, re you're done with your eights, you're ready to break off into some nice heavy combat. Join in with the group over at Discord. There's usually something going on. If not, I'll jump in and, and try to get something gathered up. You know, there's always there's always something going on, something cool to do, especially when you have new content dropping. About every week, it seems like. Last week was we had the Lapest movement, but there wasn't really a whole lot of the new content as far as what we were hoping for. Something just amazingly awesome, but it was worth that that dry spell week. I think to get that man going because when we took it out i'll be honest my first thoughts was really it's just red man it's and it's it's dropping fast but what happens is as you're shooting it it then uh once you get to that point where it starts to teleport like the other one did it turns the skies red and then it starts every time it teleports it brings in a duplicate of itself you have to figure out which one is the main ship which one is a apparition just destroy them both because they both are going to drop loot. Both sides are going to drop uh, gold boxes, man, and just collect and stack up on that. And if you got a group of guys with all with a contract, just kind of make sure their contracts ain't active. But what you're going to find out is, and I'm sure they'll fix it, it's going to continue to spawn man golden ship. You just go to drop off a Kamoi. A lot of times you don't even make it there, and the battle starts back up. So that was really great last night. I, I bet we hit that thing. Man, I bet we hit it 10, might even been 15 times last night. I just start stacking them gold boxes to the ceiling, and uh, when it come time to open everything up, open everything right in the middle of the battle, because someone was telling me that you have a better chance of dropping a cosmetic for what you're currently fighting, if you're currently fighting it when you open it. So I don't know if that's true or not, but it did seem to work, because I'd opened up 60, bo 60 boxes earlier on the on Kamoi and got nothing cog wheels some tar stuff like that which you know it's obviously it's not nothing it's something that you can use in the game but it wasn't what I was hoping for now you're going to get a lot of that uh, red spectral ash whatever it's called you're going to get a ton of that you're going to get the vengeful essence which looks like it's in a glass bottle you get that stuff so you can build your flame weapons. Uh, we didn't build any. We ended up, the first six times we fought it, we ended up getting a drop. As soon as you kill the last ship, it was dropping those blue spectral weapons. So we've got a ton of those to spread around the community. And uh, if people want them, I mean, it's one of those things. I'm not really impressed with the weapon. Now, it may come out where they increase the range more than just 10% with one piece of furniture, which would be cool. If we could stack those furnitures, it would be really nice. And that may be something I'll look into because it could definitely be a, a really nice perk to have on. But then again, you're having to carry all that extra ammunition with the fuel drums, and they take up a lot of space. So if you're on, say, a brigantine, you're going to run out of room very quickly. 
you're going to be in a very bad situation. You don't want to become over encumbered in battle. And that happened to quite a few of us last night because I think we ended up running that mission like three times in a row and didn't go back to dock. And it was just, I guess we're going to hit you because you want to park right there, man. That's fine. Get out the way, bro. Alright, let's get this marked up here. Make sure we haven't missed anything. Right. Nope, looks like we're still on track. Oh, so there was a question about what it is that's on my mask that's glowing blue. Uh, that is the other mermaid piece that you put on the mask, just like what's on the, the, the helmet's head here or the mast head here. You can put one on the mast and it just adds an extra effect when it screams out. One of them lets you know when battle's coming, there's an enemy ship. I think that's the mast piece. And then when there's incoming battle, when your crew's hollering out, if it's got an actual lot of fire coming in, it'll it'll kick off too. So, so I hope that answers that question, guys. All right. Pretty sure that's the helm ship. The only bad thing about coming in here with the locals mad is the freaking towers. It's a little pest. It's a fart bag on the water. I think we missed him. It happens. Now I think we can actually take out that other ship close enough when he explodes. Oh yeah, it worked. They'll run through that, that green mist, man, and it just eats them up. Alright, so we need to... I, I hope they fix that. That's something that started last week. You spawn in to see your ship, what direction you're heading to mark on the map, and it's totally away from where your ship's currently at. So, I'm not sure what happened in there. Something with the last... 1.3 update I'm assuming I was hoping to see it fixed but it may be one of the things I need to send in to Ubisoft and let them know that hey there's an issue so they can get it resolved typically when that happens when you go check out your locations everything's going to show like for a level 1 or a level 2 fort on your 8's is still collecting properly it just shows a weird value on it so And we're headed back into the wind. That's one thing you'll notice is if you're picking up eights, it doesn't matter which way you, you know, come in from. The wind's going to shift over. You just have to roll with it. Okay, so this fort here is the one fort that if you have a wanted level, and I guess it's because it's a large fort. If you have one level by the locals, you have to take care of that before you can collect. Not a big problem. Just swing out. got some range on it, ain't it? Okay, we're losing that wanted level. We should be able to swing in here in just a minute. Let's 
go collect now. But yeah, like I said, this is the one location if you have one level by locals you can't pick up. I don't know why that is. It just is. Easy fix to swing out. You could swing further south and pick up over at the lumber yard and come over, but I don't know. I, to me, it's easy to just make a little loop, swing in, and grab it. Or just don't shoot anything. But where's the fun in that? The smaller ships I don't usually deal with, but these up here, the campaigns, you will get that green heart plank and other materials. You can even get that that wood tar from here. Taking out the campaigning. Didn't mean to hiccup in everyone's ears. Ah, coffee. Then we swing over, we grab this Garande, Garandi, I don't know. We grab it, and then we swing up to St. Anne, drop off our eights. We'll see how much we collected. I don't even think the warehouses were a quarter full. There's a couple that paid out 2000 Most of them around the 1400 mark. But it, like I say, it still it does a good job on building up where you can collect as you need to. And it's nice to be able to let it collect it in the morning and just let it do what its thing is. And you might be able to come in and, and fund some forts. I've offset my funding where, you know, a third of the area will need to be funded. And then tomorrow, a third of the area will need to be funded. And maybe, uh, well, it'll be this morning and then the evening and then the first thing in the morning. Uh, or you can fund them all at once. It's up to you if you want to allow the warehouse to completely fill up, max out, and the timers run completely out and get them all in sync. Uh, me personally, I like to offset it. It doesn't seem to me like it's costing as much. I know it costs the same, guys. But it's that, it's that psychological thing, man. If you're coming out and you're funding at 20 level 10s, you're just going to be sitting there kicking yourself in the head going, man, this is so expensive. So break it up into thirds, do farming in between, and you shouldn't have as much of a, a shell shock on that price. Now, if you think you're just going to come in and collect eights and everything's going to be done, you're going to run into a situation where you run out of silver real fast. You need to be farming those helm supply ships. I think that's something we're going to work in today. Uh, I think I'm going to bring it up to the Mangoden area, load up a bunch of contracts, swing up there to Mangoden, and fight that thing, man. That's going to be a lot of fun. We like to combine our farming with world events. If you've not watched our channel before, it becomes pretty obvious. The more ships on the water, the happier we are. I think he's just out of range. He was. Oh, he shot into St. Anne. They need to destroy him. What are they waiting on? If that had been me shooting in there, they'd have got me. Okay, we brought in 42,583. So that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Okay, we're tier five, whatever that means. Check your leaderboard. So for the season, 1347. For the weekly, we are at 660. So, not bad. Usually by our evening collection, I'll usually collect in the evening sometimes, and that'll make a, bring us up to the 400 range. But everyone's so close in how much they've collected right now. I don't, I don't really get too concerned with it. But I'm guessing once you hit this tier five, man, and you get the diamond rank, I guess the sovereign stop. Don't know. I don't see anything tracking it. So looks like our seasonal resets in 62 days. So that's just over two months. We're right at two months with 31 days and then the 30 days. So yeah, we're, we're right at two months with it. So, But I hope you've enjoyed the video. Folks, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, farming with, with helms. So you come over to the order registry. And you want to come in and you want to load up every single one of these contracts. Don't bother delivering. 
uh, before you end, make sure you go down here, blow up the liaison. That's going to just give you the eights that he should have bought the stuff for, and you keep your materials. But it's going to cause helm ships. The more contracts you're carrying, the more friends you have carrying as many contracts they can carry. It's going to fill the bay up. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to grab these contracts, and then we are going to end up working our way. If I can find somebody with the contract for the Mangoden, we're going to farm our way up here and hammer away. So I did notice that they had a few new events. So this is a hostile takeover. There is something called the... Uh, shipwreck cargo event so i guess it took the place of the cutthroat cargo or maybe it's just something similar we've not ran that yet but when it pops up that is my intention to give it a good try y'all have a wonderful day we're gonna hop off here